All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is. All right, so like I explained before, here's your mobile boards, all right? Or maneuvering board. So, get to the basics. Send a mobile board that's usually always on ship. Unless we're doing the station and mobile board, that's a whole nother bag, don't worry, we'll go over that another time. So, got your one to one scale. Two to one, three to one, four to one, and your five to one scale. Now your five to one scale is primarily used for your speed. You can also use it for range if you have a contact that you have to actually do a mobile on that's far out. Hopefully you won't have to. All right, so down here on the bottom, these lines here are used for your calculations as far as your relatives. So what you got? Time, distance, speed and knots. Now your speed and knots and your time are interchangeable, all right? Unless you have something that's over 60, then it won't be. All right, so let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Let's say that the Blue Ridge, excuse my hand right now, right like a doctor, uh, even though I'm, I'm, I'm not one. So let's say Blue Ridge is on course 020 at 10 knots. Right. So you take your bodice here and you go ahead and you measure out on your five to one scale, 10 knots. Put your metal pointer in the center. You make your little dot right there on the zero two zero line. Now, you can just do an arrow. If you don't like a whole bunch of lines, that's usually why I do it. Or you can actually just draw a line out so you can see exactly what your ship is doing. There you go. All right, so let's say your first hit on this contact at time 12.03. Let's say it bears 050, 14,000 yards. Let's say at time 12.06, that contact now bears 049, 11,000 yards. All right, now with mobile watch, there's nothing but angles really, triangles to be exact, all right? So whenever you're doing your radar fixes, you wanna either have two hits, three minutes apart, or three hits, two minutes apart. That way, the time equals six minutes, which is easily divided by three. Pretty simple. Rules of three work very, very well doing mobile boards. All right, so, me, myself, I'm gonna use two to one scale. Why the two to one scale, you ask? I'm glad you asked that, very simple. So, I usually rule, I will use the rule of eight, all right? Or the number eight. So if I'm on a one-to-one -one scale, if it's 8,000 or more, guess what's gonna happen? That contact's going either this way or that way, you're gonna run off your mobile, we don't wanna do that. So if it's more than 8,000 yards, then I'm gonna bump up to my two-to-one scale. If it's more than 18,000 yards, then I'm gonna bump up to my three-to-one scale, so on and so forth, all right? So like I said, we're gonna use the two-to-one. So, I'm gonna range out to 14,000. I'm gonna find that 050 line. Boom, make my little dot there. All right. So remember, when you're doing these, you know, you don't wanna make your dots too big or have your lines too big. That can throw you off. You know, you end up being a couple degrees off or uh, even a couple minutes off when your time you do your calculations. So for that next hit, 11,000 yards, I'm gonna use my parallel for this one so I can be more accurate and that's going to be 049 make my little dot bam all right time zero six all right so another thing you want to remember too like I said mobile is pretty much triangles so SDT speed distance time any two will get you the third one all right always remember that so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take a look at our two radar hits or dots, either way. And we're gonna draw a line in the direction that it's going. We wanna draw it past the center of our own ship, all right? And then we're gonna to parallel to our, what represents our course and speed heading, same direction, all right? So, what we saw them for is bearing range, course, speed, and time. Now, you can also just solve for bearing range, time, then course and speed. However you do it, always do it that way, all right? 
because it becomes muscle memory. It's repetition. That way you do it without thinking about it. This is the way I do it. The reason I do it this way is because if I find out that the range is greater than 5,000 yards, then this contact is nothing to worry about. But if it ends up that it's less, now it's on my radar and I'm thinking about it. And I gotta start deciding if we're gonna avoid this contact or not. So, SDT, speed distance time. Before I get into that, let's find out what the bearing and range is for this contact. So, CPA, close point of approach. So you're gonna take your parallel and you're gonna go 90 degrees. And I'm gonna do it on this particular line right here and I'm gonna tell you why, all right? Once you get your 90 degrees, you come to the center, all right? Gonna make a tick here, gonna make a tick over here. This would represent the CPA bearing for that contact. Right now I got it at 322. And from the center of the mold board to where that little tick mark is we just made represent the range. And this contact seems to be about 800 yards. So it is really, really close. We're gonna need to avoid this guy. So why is the CPA on this particular line? That's because this line is your DRM, direction relative motion, all right? This line is gonna represent the line for the contact, all right? It's where the hits are at, and this is where we expect them to be at, all right, at a certain time. That's certain the speed of relative motion, all right? That's why it's on the same line with our heading and course speed. So, bearing 322, 800 yards, this person is close. So let's figure out what's the course and speed. So we'll figure out the distance between the two contact hits. I got it about 3,000 yards. So we're gonna walk down 3,000 yards, all right? That's your distance. We know the time between them, three minutes. So we're gonna mark that, all right? So now we got our time, we got our distance, Go ahead and line those up. Boom. So we get SRM 30. All right, now remember that is speed of relative motion, not true speed. Everything down here is pretty much relative. Your true speed and true course always gonna come from the center. Now, to get this SRM down here, you don't only have to use parallel. You can also use your dividers. You'll take the metal pointer, you'll put it, place it in the middle. It'll range out to that three minute mark or whatever time mark it is. Swing it around, look at that, still in your 30. And like I said before, these two are interchangeable. So even if you don't swing all the way around, you just swing here, look at that, still in your 30. All right, so moving right along. Take our SRM, which is 30, you measure that out. And since this is the SRM, we will put it on our SRM line. So you'll put your metal pointer on the arrow that represents our course and speed. You swing that bad boy around. Look at that, now we got a tick mark on our SRM. Tick mark is very important. What that tick mark represents is the true course that, that contact is going, all right? So we'll use our divider and our parallel together, coming from the center, and line it up so you get where that tick and that line meets to get that cross here. This represents that true course that, that contact is going. And I got it going two, four, six. Now the distance from sending the mobile board to where that tick meet represents the true speed of that contact. And I got it at 22 knots. So as of right now, TPA bearing for this contact is 322, range 800 yards, course 246, and it's moving 22 knots. So it's cooking. So what time will it get there? Remember your FDT, it still applies. Got our S, speed of relative motion. So the distance from the CPA, that last known point, we have at 11,000 yards, right? So we're gonna mark our 11,000. You notice, we got our speed of motion, we got our distance, and that's gonna give us our time. Line it up, look at that triangle. So it'll be there in 11 minutes. 
Now, of course, you do know you add your 11 minutes to your actual time. It'll be there at time 16. All right. So now we know how much time we got. So roughly, we got 11 minutes to figure out what we're going to do about this contact that's going to pretty much be right on top of us. So we already know what the standing orders say, right? Me, myself, I'd rather say 5,000 yards, we want that guy at. 4,000 yards is cool. I mean, that's what the standing orders say. So how do we avoid this guy on the mobile? Really, really simple. We already did our leg work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our dividers. We're going to range out to whatever distance we want to have this guy pass us. I'm going to just do 5,000. All right. Looking at the course and speed that we're currently going, I'm going to take that 5,000. And I'm going to do a semicircle, half moon, whatever you want to call it. Make sure when you range out for this circle, you use the same scale. Whatever the scale you're using, always continue to use that scale. All right. That way your numbers aren't off. So now I got that semicircle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that last known point and according with the rules of the road, I'm gonna go for a court to court passage. In some cases you can't do that depending on how much time you got or if there's another contact behind it. But that's fine, we'll do a court to court passage. So I'm gonna go from last known point to where the end of that circle meets. I'm gonna draw a line. From there, I'm gonna parallel this to that tick mark we made for that contact course and speed. Just like I said earlier, that was a very important tick mark. And from there, I'm going to take this line and do it opposite direction. The reason I'm doing it opposite direction because we're the ones altering course. So now with this line, any place that the tick hits on this line will give us our course. I'll show you what I mean. Currently, we're doing 10 knots, right? So I'll measure out 10 knots. Let's say we want to maintain 10 knots and avoid this contact by 5,000 yards. We'll put our metal pointer on the center of the mold board. That's where true speed comes from. We'll make our tick. And this will give us the course that we will alter to avoid this contact by 5,000 yards on our port side. Which seems to be 102. All right. Let's say, oh snap, there's another contact behind it. So we need to hurry past this contact so we can avoid the other one. That's cool. We'll bump up 20 knots. I'm not sure if the blue rig can do 20 knots, but for purpose of this mobile board, we'll go ahead and say 20 knots. Put our little tick there. Oh, snap, look at that. So we did 20 knots to avoid this contact, 5,000 5, yards on our port side. We will come right to course 090. So that's how you do your basic CPA mobile board with avoiding course. Now, let's say it's a special case. We can't avoid this contact on our port side. We got to do it on our starboard side. No problem. It's the same thing. All right. Last known position, that contact. Come outside that circle. Draw your line. Go to where that tick mark is we made. Opposite direction. Hope this isn't too many lines to where it confuses you. And then of course, wherever your tick mark lands on this will be the course, give us the course we need to alter. All right, that's it. That's CPA bearing range, course speed time with an important course.